So hi Catherine, welcome to Liverpool. I believe you've been in Rail for less than two months. Yeah, I've been in Rail now for about, this is the fifth week. Uh, we both inherited <laughs> this problem on the Strand. Uh, can you tell us what, what the purpose of um, this part of the connectivity programme is about? So we've got um, improved cycle facilities. So we're having a segregated cycle route for cyclists, two way, which is really needed. But also the carriageway is a lot narrower. So it, it kind of creates a boulevard effect. Um, and also we've tried to create a more smooth uh, movement through the area um, by um, allowing um, reduced junctions and giving that sort of reduced um, number of traffic signals and really just giving a smooth move in terms of um, vehicle movement and flow down the strand. It feels like, you know, as a resident, I'm not sure we were communicated very well about it. You know, I certainly didn't know that it was happening. Uh, some people talk about a big regeneration project on the, on the north end of the city. What was the idea behind that? These schemes do take years to develop. So the consultation was in 2016, and that was a while back, and, and we had over 800 responses at that time. A lot of residents and businesses at the consultation stage, they don't quite realize how long it's, it takes to actually be on site and actually construct. And that's something that we could be better at in terms of just taking um, our businesses and residents through that journey. Um, so basically, we get on site and then everyone's like, we didn't know about it, you know, and unfortunately for us as officers, that's quite um, worrying and upsetting. And I really want to start looking at bringing innovation and creating that so that um, our residents and businesses can really understand what scheme, what the impact is on them and really bring it to life as opposed to them seeing like a, a plan and with some lines on the plan and some text. So well, what do you think about kinds of how long we're stuck in traffic? What are the wait times at the moment? So there will be journey time savings for all modes, whether it's pedestrians, cyclists, buses and vehicles. Once the scheme's constructed, they will notice that they will flow through this area. And it's more about people movement. So we really want to encourage people to use buses because it's about the number of people moving through an area as opposed to the number of vehicles. That's where we need to be. Um, and I think one of the things that we really need to work on and improve is um, coordination yeah. of works. So we make sure that we don't, um, you know, we don't go through one section of roadworks and then go on to another section yeah. of roadworks and so on and so forth. So there are a number of tools and techniques that we can implement and I'm looking to you know strengthen the team so that we can really better understand and coordinate the roadworks so that we minimize the impact on those um, moving through the areas. I think that's a really good point actually there's a number of things going on around the city and I think people get confused by that because it, it seems that if we're doing something here why didn't we leave the roadwork? So you've inherited this what would you do differently? We have a duty on us to make sure that we coordinate all the, all the work. As part of the, the review um, and improvement plan, we will be looking at um, developing a dedicated uh, coordination team that will actually have a bit more authority in terms of um, making decisions if schemes go ahead at certain times as well and taking a bit more control. Um, and that will enable, um, reduce the, the amount of roadworks happening, you know, simultaneously and causing problems. Because the most annoying thing is that you get diverted off a route and then you find more roadworks or, or another road closed and you know that just frustrates all of us. I know the, the public transport is often in the hands of the Liverpool City region but what do we propose for this area in terms of encouraging yeah, acts of travel? Yes. Predominantly what we just do is that we just think of the commuter and, and we now need to think about leisure as well and I think Covid has really made us think a bit you know wider in terms of connecting those public spaces with our public highways and our public realm and making sure there's this seamless sort of movements between them and that will encourage um, children and parents to take their children on these routes and across you know some of these previously dangerous kind of interception sections or you know or roads. Active travel obviously um, will enable us to get to net zero carbon in yeah. 2030. The central reserve has been made wide. It looks really great. What I noticed is coming out the office and just looking up the streets. It looks really good. And there's some new trees planted. And, you know, explain what's happening here. What's, what's this going to look like yeah. in the future? Over here is where you can see where they've broken out here. And that's where the new um, segregated cycle lane is going to be. And it'll be two lanes. Um, so basically, it's, it's really, really nice. It's going to really open up this place. And, you know, like we're sitting here today, we're hoping that people will be able to sit here and really enjoy the public realm. We've narrowed the carriageway, so the crossing points for pedestrians are going to be a lot easier in terms of getting across the road. By reducing the crossing widths yeah. and opening up the, 
the whole area will mean that it will reduce the number of, yeah. of accidents. So this scheme is, is a public realm scheme, it's a bus scheme, yeah. it's also accident reduction as well.